All right, so today I'll do the IET relocation. Um, <clears throat> you can see right here, I've already taken out the ECU and the top cover here. I have a video for that. If you need it, just let me know and I'll get it to you. So um, after we get to this point, next thing I'm gonna wanna do is take the tank off because uh, the sensor is down in there. Actually, I can see it right there. See the two, uh, two wires coming on top of it? That's the IET sensor. I can kind of reach it, but I really can't get in there, so I'm just gonna make some good clearance and pull the tank out. Now, why do you need the IET? All right, so this IET is sitting here on top of the engine, and because it's sitting on top of the engine, it's of course going to be hot while the bike is running, very hot, a lot hotter than ambient temperatures. So what happens is while your bike's sitting there idling for a while, the air is not pushing through here to cool it down. So when you take off, let's say from like a dig race or something like that, um, the bike's gonna pull a lot of power out of there because it thinks it's way hotter outside than it is actually outside on the bike. So when you start moving, the air will start coming in, and of course the IET will actually cool down at that point, but you have to be moving for that to happen. Um, so this gets the results from like very slow riding and uh, let's say dig racing. And then um, it'll actually give you accurate IETs and give you full power on the hit. So in order to pull the tank off, we have to first pull the seat off. And to pull the seat off, there's two little bolts right there. One right there, and there's one on the other side as well. So I'm gonna get this off, and then when you pull those two out, this whole seat just slides out like that. Okay, so like I said, I've turned these bolts out. Everything pulls out like this. You just pull the seat out like that. Now we got access to everything else here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off these side plastic panels here. So go ahead and just pull this screw out right here, and these things will just basically slide out. Okay, I forgot to mention there's a little pull clip here. So when you get done screwing that, it'll still feel like it's in there. Just pull from right here, and there's a little pop clip that comes there. Seeing right there. All right, after the seat and both those sides are off, you can now move on to the side of the tank right here. So that's a Torx, uh, I don't know how huge it is, I'll find out in a second here. But it's a Torx on each side of this, and then this thing will kind of move after we loosen this as well. All right, so once everything is uh, out of there, you have these bolts out of there, and this bottom one, tank moves pretty freely around there. Now I do have a couple issues here. So I'm moving the tank around here, and you can see the IET, and I can get to it, and I could probably do everything without removing the rest of the tank, but let's just remove the whole thing here so you guys can get a good uh, view of everything. There's two lines. These are both just empty lines. There's no fuel running through them. It's just for fumes. Just pull these out the tank. Um, if you try to pull with your hand, it's gonna be a difficult time. Try to use pliers, kind of move it, and jerk it around, and then get it off of there. Okay, after you move the tank out of the way here with the lines and everything, you can just prop it up here like this just fine. No issue whatsoever. Um, there are There is a fuel line going on the bottom, which you can disconnect. A couple drops will come out, and there's two actual harnesses that go into the bottom as well. You can pull all that out and move the tank away if you'd like, but I'm just leaving it here because it's not in danger. It's secured pretty well and I have access to everything I need here. Now this is the IET sensor, I've already unclicked it. It's really just a little, that's all you do. Push it and pull it out. Now all you gotta do is pull the sensor out. There's a little screwdriver that's gotta fit in there and this whole thing will pop right out of here. All right, so I got to the IET and just using two hands, I was able to hit the clip over here on this other side and the whole thing came out. So this is the IET itself. And right at the tip here, this is how it reads the air temperature. Okay, so now we gotta relocate it. So first thing we gotta do, is we're gonna go ahead and plug this hole with what Bren supplies. Now this is what Bren gives you right here to plug that hole for the original IET hole because we're moving it to the front of the bike. So we're not gonna need that hole anymore. We should cover it up because it's we don't want debris just flying into the engine like that. So this is what Bren provides right here and this just plugs right in. Now, these uh, arms right here are too small at the moment so take a little bit of pliers and open them up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of put it in there and if it works, Awesome, if kind of you hear it like this little snap while you're pushing in there, great. Um, if it just kind of falls in there, then bring it back out again and go ahead and open up these arms a little bit more until you get a proper fit. A little bit of trial and error. All right, and first time was a charm for me and you can see it down in there. I can't get it out, I can't feel anything. Even if I put a pair of uh, uh, screwdriver in there, whatever, it's not coming out very well. So that means we got a good seal there. Next, we're gonna plug this line to what Bren provides uh, with the kit which is right here. Just kind of plug this in on the end that fits and you're good to go. All right, so after you're done removing the air box here, which if you don't understand how to, I have a video on that. If you don't know where it is, message me and I'll send it to you. Okay, so connect the IET to the actual 
IAT on the engine harness there, the extension to the engine harness, we're gonna run this through the bike. Now, most people connect it here first and then run it through the bike, get it through everything. Now, I'm gonna do it backwards. I'm gonna run it through the cluster and then I'll go all the way back to the sensor. It's gonna make this a lot easier. Okay, it takes a little bit of finesse with the fingers, but you wanna run it right through there right to this point right here, that where the harness here, everything goes. Then we're actually gonna follow this and uh, just follow the harness all the way through here. And there's a hole in the frame right here. You're gonna wanna push everything through and then mount it up here to the IT sensor. All right, now you can see everything uh, is connected here. I have the IT sensor right there. I'm running it down through everything. It's not pretty yet, um, but you can see it's down here running through the, the frame here running up through here and connect to the sensor itself. Now the next step is the fun one. We get to drill out the bike basically. We want to drill a nice little hole in there. So I'll show you to do that next. All right, first thing I want to do is move your harness out of the way. So I just kind of lifted this up, move this harness through there. There's a harness over here. I moved to the other side and uh, I'm going to want to drill a hole basically right there. Okay, right there. So I'm gonna go get a drill size and uh, size it up with the actual IET sensor itself. And then I'm gonna start drilling. All right, so I made a point there and that's where I'm gonna start drilling right there. I'm gonna go with a small bit and go larger and larger. And by the way, if anyone needs a tutorial on how to take the Speedo cluster out, um, I have one of those uh, on, uh, on the page somewhere. If you need help finding it, let me know. Um, basically what I'm gonna do here before I start drilling through is I'm gonna put a towel underneath here couple rags in here so any debris that goes through you just pull right out with the rags so after you drill the hole you just want to stick the IT right in there now I kind of stepped up um, I went for like a, a quarter inch and kind of stepped up from there eventually this is a half inch I kind of um, made a little larger than half inch and it sticks in there pretty well it's not gonna click in or do anything special it's just gonna kind of sit there if it sits there well enough and that's good um, now you're gonna do is click this in and um, put all the wiring back the way it was put the cluster back in and then you're gonna to wanna to make all this wiring look good. All right, so now I made it look nice and good. We got the sensor in there at the top. It's running down through here and I gotta make it look really nice and basically like it's supposed to be on the bike here all the way through till it gets to the bike down here. And now I'm gonna run the sensor up through here and do a little bit of trimming. Or not trimming, sorry, but um, I'll be zip tying some of this away from here. But this is basically how it's gonna route through here. We're gonna make it look pretty onto here. So to make it look a little more clean, I've pulled out the bolt here for the remainder of this box here for the air box, um, and I slid the wire underneath it. So I don't have to worry about it going through here anymore. I just worry about it going through here. And I'm zip tied along the wire harness here till it goes back into the IET. All right, so everything's routed properly now. I put a couple zip ties here on the line to follow the IET on the main wiring harness. I put the IT sensor, or at least the, the harness extension, back into the hole that I've plugged up. So it kind of just stays in there. Um, and I have the wire running down through here, through the frame, through here, which I have a couple zip ties, through there, and uh, up through there. And you can actually see the sensor sitting here at the top. And then uh, let's see if we can see it from the front of the bike as well. All right, there we go. I kind of see it way back in there. There she is, but I don't see it from here. Huh? I see a little bit right there. But if you see it from the front of the bike, you can't see it. That's the whole point. That's why you stick it where you stick it because you don't want it just hanging right from the top here and making the front of your bike all nice and ugly. So it's right in there. It'll get all the nice the fresh air, but it's not losing any aesthetics of the bike. And that's pretty much it. Um, just uh, put everything back together again and you're all set.